Hello and welcome to more Live the Dream Cube draft. And uh, we're setting the stakes. I'm going back to the trophy streak. I have trophied the last two drafts, which happen to be the first two drafts of this format. So we're going for three in a row. And let's see what we can do. This cube has been extremely fun and I've been successful with it. So I, I think I found my favorite cube so far. Um, looking at this pack, what do we got here? Nexus of Fate is in here. That's interesting. We got Nexus um, Migration Path. We want to go really deep on like spells matter this could be good because it gives you two lands and it cycles so it's always going to be relevant at any point during the game and it is fixing the problem is that it requires you going green that's not necessarily the worst thing but none of these other cards really stand out to me as being good like yeah maybe like ephemerate but i haven't seen too many payoffs for ephemerate so it's between migration path or just taking a godless shrine the thing is i'm not uh I'm just going to take the migration path. I think the fact that it cycles really makes it actually quite good. And four mana for two, like double ramp is really nice because they have signets in here. So you can go turn two signet, turn three migration path, and then just have infinite mana going forward. Um, From this pack, what do we like? So spell swindle, I do love. <laughs> I think this card is really like underrated. Um, it's a counter spell that then gives you tons of mana going forward. We could take Rael Zarek. So this is four mana, it does ramp, it does damage, and then you take a bunch of turns. Um, I don't know if I like taking that so early. I, I do like the empowered auto generator. With Between that and migration path, we could go really deep on mana. And that would essentially let us... I mean, <laughs> I'm not forcing five color, but it we're, we're being open to the idea of it. It is four mana though, so I would really need to prioritize like getting other types of fixing, but I think that's fine. There's just so many big payoffs in this cube that I think we're we're totally gonna get there. Here, there's actually a couple options. We have Scalding Tarn, which I do like it. It will give us good fixing later on. I've been a huge fan of Atris. I think I've had it in both my decks so far, and both times it was just like a Mold Drifter for less mana. And the 3-2 the Menace body is actually pretty relevant too. So the more I play with this card, just the better it gets. Boros Signet does help with the acceleration strategy that we were going for. And then Roshmi is fine. The biggest issue with Roshmi is that it's a creature and it dies to basically everything. So I think we're going to take a Boros Signet over Scalding Tarn because we really do want to maximize our chances of going turn two thing, turn four, or turn three thing. Yeah, we're going hard ramp. We'll see how it pays off. Uh, Thassa's Intervention. I do like that card a lot. It is double blue. Um, Badlands I like. Watcher for tomorrow's fine i'm kind of leaning towards the intervention because it's good with having a lot of mana right we can get mana with migration path the auto generator but then it's also disruptive so we can stop our opponents from doing things i have to read what this is three plus three plus one whenever it dies you can reveal cards until you hit a creature that shares a creature type that's fine i'm gonna take the intervention it might be worse than badlands but i think that's okay Ooh, now we're getting somewhere dream eater is very good um Final pairing searches for two cards, one in your hand, one in your graveyard. Okay, I think for us, it's between Bloodstained Mire and Dream Eater. So this is a six mana, four, three, flash flying. When it enters the battlefield, surveil four, and then you can bounce a thing. Uh, maybe that's a little bit worse than I thought. Being six mana is a lot, although this deck is kind of in on having expensive payoffs. I don't know what to take. Bloodstained Mire does open up the doors, but I could just be straight blue green. Yeah, we'll take Dream Eater. That is the second double blue card I've been passed, and it could be because like the packs just had a lot of blue cards in them, but it could be because blue is open, and given this pack, I think that's what's happening. I can pick up a nice Supreme Will, and then it, it to me, it's looking like blue-black is open, and I'd rather go a little bit more towards blue because I think it's better, and I have good blue cards here, but we're just going to keep that in mind that green's probably being cut, um, and white... I haven't even considered playing so far. So we're just going to take the good card Supreme Will. And now we have a decent controlling deck shaping up. Um, okay, what is Crystalline Crawler? It's a 4 mana 1-1. One, one. It enters the battlefield with a plus 1 plus 1 counter for each color of mana spent. And then you can put counters on it or just use that mana later. That seems okay. Not the greatest thing ever. This is a 2 mana 2-1. Two, and... Whenever it becomes untapped, you can draw a card and give it unblockable. So you can use it to loot. It does like get in for incremental damage. That seems okay. There is a Revelark. 
Atali is a good payoff. Parting thoughts, destroy a creature, you draw X cards, and lose X life, where X is the number of counters on that creature. That actually seems interesting too. And blue-black was the direction I think we, we were seeing we should go, so I think I'm going to take parting thoughts. I don't know how often I'm going to get like the, the counters value, but we do need a bit of removal, and that seems nice. Mana Confluence is probably what I'm looking towards. We could take Chunky Boy over here. <laughs> I just love... I really like the fact that it is a dinosaur hippo, and oh, this card is... The artwork is fantastic. I don't think it's going to work for us because, I mean, I don't think I'm going to play that many permanents. So I don't really need it, but I just appreciate that that card exists. Scholar of the Lost Trove is a 7 mana 5-5, five five, and it's a kind of like a sorcery speed gear hulk. That's a little bit too slow, so we're just going to take mana confluence. Getting good mana. Wow, Godless Shrine going around. I think I'm interested in this Icker Slick. I think we might just have a sweet blue-black control deck shaping up. I, I know people are going to tell me to take the Wave Break Hippocamp, but like the whole point of this deck is that we are controlling and we're playing like very few creatures and the ones we do are hard to kill or they have a good effect when they enter. What's going to happen if we put this in our deck is we're going to cast it and our opponent's just going to like lightning bolt it or braid it or use any of the other removal spells on it. So we're not really going to get value from it. And even if we do, right, even if we like try and extract max value from this, we would have to cast two spells. It would take two turns to just draw two cards. Whereas Icker Slick is basically kill one creature draw a card so like you're already getting the value you would get from the hippocamp by casting a spell on their turn and drawing a card but you don't have to pay any cost to do it it's it's one card that has all that effect um finale of eternity versus vizier of tumbling sands i guess we take finale it is a little bit slow but that's fine wow wow okay we found the open lane for sure atris glint sleep siphoner i think this card's also fine right uh, it doesn't draw cards. What we need is cards that draw us cards, and I'm going to take Atris because it's similar effect that we want cards that draw cards when they enter, because we're going to play a low creature count, I imagine. So Glint Sleeve Siphoner, I would probably still take it and play it in the deck, but um, Atris is just better here because we get the value regardless of whether he dies or not. So that's quite nice. Ooh, Agonizing Remorse too. I think this card goes up in value a lot in a cube that's based on synergies and interactions because like one little disruption spell can like exile your opponent's big payoff card and then they're left with a bunch of life gain that doesn't really do anything. I guess we can take final parting in case we do end up going like reanimator or something, but I doubt we will. Last pick Atali is interesting. Heartless summoning is also interesting. So right now, I don't know if I necessarily like it, because it's card disadvantage, but we'll see how much card draw we end up with. I'm gonna put it over here somewhere. Oh wow, this is uh, this is quite the pack. <laughs> um, I want to take so many cards from here. Fetid Pools is probably the card we're going to wheel, although someone might take it. But blue black seems very wide open. So out of all these cards, this is the one we want to come around. What we need to do is decide what our deck is looking for. Do we need card draw? Because Factor Fiction is just absolutely insane card draw. Do we want Sensor as just a cheap play for a bit more interaction? And I also think Mimic Vat is very strong in our deck. We have a lot of Enter the Battlefield effects like Dream Eater, Atris. So if they kill our creatures, we can put stuff under it. But we have so much removal that we could just win off our opponent's creatures. But I don't think Mimic Vat is the pick here. I think it's between Factor Fiction and Sensor. I will bring up Solemn. This card's really good. But I think I like Factor Fiction a little bit more for this deck. And I have quite a bit of ramp and stuff. I'm going to take Fof over Sensor. There is also a chance that Sensor comes around. I don't think it's insanely likely, but that would be awesome. This is Island Mountain Plains. I think at this point I'm mostly committing to blue-black, so I might not even be playing this migration path. Although I'll keep it in mind. I could, I guess I could take the Tropical Island and then try and wheel the, like, put migration path in my deck. Um, the other option is taking, like, Tragic Slip or Thada Adele. Um, how much do I value that green card? Because with Tropical Island and Empowered Auto Generator and Mana, Mana Confluence, that is three green sources for a card that cycles. So that could work, and we do have some expensive spells here, but I don't know if I really like that too much. The other benefit of Tropical Island is it would make like a green-black fetch better, like then we could fix our mana better that way. I think I'm just going to take the Trop, right? This requires five different cards being flipped. 
yeah, we're just going to take the Trop. I'm not too excited about any of the cards in this pack. Like, I'll probably wheel Thought Adele and Tragic Slip, and neither of them are, like, insane. Um, a lot of weird cards here. Mountain Plain Swamp, not good for us. I like Reflecting Pool. If a source you control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals triple that damage. <laughs> That's a lot of damage, okay. Um, we could splash a Sorin. Sorin's not a bad thing to splash. I mean, this is a very good late game win condition. Let's just pick up a Sorin. So now, probably going to take an Irrigated Farmland to make Sorin work. Oh, I do love Supplant Form, though. Bounce a creature, you make a token that's a copy of it. So you get the Enter the Battlefield effects and things. Uh, I think I have enough top end, though. We're going to be Disciplined, take the Irrigated Farmland. We're drafting to win. I keep forgetting. Firemind Vessel, that's quite good, but also Champion of Wits. Right, just comes down turn three, lets us draw and discard. You get it back in the late game, so it's good both sides. Yeah, I think I'm down for that. Not the best combo with a Heartless Summoning. <laughs> when you cast it, you would draw one, discard two, which isn't great. Yeah, I think I'm going to take that over a Firemind Vessel. I already have a couple four drops. I'm still probably going to play Migration Path. I guess we'll see. I don't know how to make this go away. There we go. Yeah, we'll take Champion of Wits. Maybe Wheel the Path, maybe not. Both is fine with me. Um, okay. Well, we get a Seagate Oracle and a Heaven Ghoul Lich. <laughs> oh, I really do like Heaven Ghoul Lich, but I think it's too slow and clunky, and Seagate Oracle basically fits this deck perfectly, so we'll just take that. It, it, this basically was one of my favorite cards to mess around with, like, in Commander, and I think when it was in Standard, I, like, made a deck with it. I don't know how good that deck was, but I think Heartless Summoning Heaven Ghoul Lich... Wait, I think there was a combo there in Standard that was like Heartless Summoning Heaven Ghoul Lich and then something else. Maybe it wasn't in, maybe it was not an infinite combo, but I definitely remember it existing. Um, this is this a good Torrential Gear Hulk deck? So I have Supreme Will, Icker Slick, Factor Fiction. The problem is both of these are not good with Torrential Gear Hulk. So I think we might just take Collective Brutality. The other option is actually taking Profit of Crufix because. We actually, our creature count is going up. Profit is absolutely absurd with like mana generation. And we do have a lot of good instants or creatures with flash. I think I'm going to take Profit of Crufix here. I just think it's such a good, strong engine that it's worth taking. Although I could see Collective Brutality being better, but I'm being a little bit risky. Riftwing Cloudskate is very good. Niv-Mizzet is also a strong card, but... Ooh, Exotic Orchard. No, we're going to play Disciplined, Riftwing Cloudskate. He says we're going to play Discipline as he is casually four colors with only three fixing lands right now. <laughs> Probably Profit was a little bit too ambitious, although it's possible I just get rid of Soren. We'll see what happens. The nice thing is mo like both of these are pretty light splashes. I mean, this card even cycles. So like the cost, the opportunity cost of putting it in our deck is not too high. And we got the Fetid Pools that I was talking about. So that's great. All right. There wasn't really much for us in this pack the first time around. so. Not too sad here. I guess I could take Azor's Gateway. Um, what does this even do? Whenever you discard a creature card, it's just so expensive. I just, there's no way. I'll take Azor's Gateway, although I don't think I will be playing it. This lets you discard a card and return it from your graveyard to your hand. So, okay, that's like a very slow rummaging effect. I kind of like that. I'm not going to be playing Mind Shriek or anything. And it does have cycling. I'll put it here with, maybe I'll play it, but probably not. Dawn of Hope is a very slow but possible win condition. I don't think I would main deck it, but in the right matchup I'd play it. Same with Knowledge Exploitation. Do I have any rogues? Human Advisor. Uh, I guess this deck's more likely to want Night Pack Ambusher, although unlikely to play it. Gamble. No. I don't think I have any rogues. No. So probably not playing this either. Unless I, my opponent has Cruel Ultimatum, then maybe I'll put it in. But it'll be a sideboard card. Ooh, wow. Okay, this pack is full of good stuff. I think I just have to take Shelldock Isle. This card is, it's so unbelievably good. I would love to have Mindstone and even Mystic Snake would be sweet in this deck. But Shelldock Isle is, it's a land that just draws you cards, cheats on mana. It's so good. Um, and we're going to get something good out of this pack, right? I don't think Mindstone comes around, but there is a chance Mystic Snake comes around. And if I have to choose between green and white... I think at this point I would choose green because Prophet of Crufix is really good and I don't really need that much top end anymore because I just have infinite card draw. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, there's everything here. Um, 
Wow, what do we take? Dig through time with the adorable dog. That's one option. Um, Shriek Maw is really good. Spectral Sailor, Thief of Sanity, Walking Ballista. Yikes. Um, I mean, Dig Through Time Factor Fiction is a really strong combo. And I'm going to... Basically, here's the reasoning to take Dig Through Time here. I'm going to wheel a value creature. You know, one of these three should come around. And even Walking Ballista might. So I'm pretty happy getting really any one of these. I guess Shriek Maw would be my preferred card because I do want some more like early interaction. But Dig Through Time is so good. We're just going to take that. Erebos's Intervention versus Shark Typhoon, I think, are the two. Spark Double is fine. Um, the biggest problem I have with Spark Double in a deck like this is it's only good if you already have something in play. And if I have something in play, I'm probably winning anyway, so I don't really need that. I think I kind of like the Intervention because the life gain is relevant and the Exile from Graveyard could be relevant. Because I, basically I want something I can cast early that's going to be good. And again, I think Shark Typhoon is a card I would love to put in my deck, but... Well, let me think about this. How much removal do I actually have? I don't know if I'm playing the Gladiator. I'll bring it in in slow matchups maybe, and... Soren's looking a little bit more suspicious just because of the mana consideration. So I can hold up mana and cycle Shark Typhoon. Make a shark. Ah, it's hard to say. I think we're going to go for this one because the life gain is pretty relevant. Urza's in here. Did not know about that one. Um, <laughs> I mean, in this cube, I know there is a ninja sub-theme, just because I'm seeing Yuriko here. So there there could be a use for ink eyes. It's just actually quite funny that they put it in here. Probably as a joke. Uh, Marsh Flats is pretty good. I think Marsh Flats means we can put Soren in the deck. It does not fetch Tropical Island, but it gets Irrigated Farmland and Fetid Pools, and it just fi fixes for Black White anyway. So I'm going to take that over Temporal Mastery. I don't think I need it too much. And whenever a ninja deals combat damage, reveal the top card. This card's actually also pretty good in our deck because um, we have a lot of like value creatures. But I'm going to take the fixing first and then go from there. Ooh, ooh. Okay, okay. We have 24 total spells, 6 lands, and we're putting Soren in the deck. Um, I could potentially put Dawn of Hope now if I take Polluted Delta. I have to take Polluted Delta. It also grabs our Tropical Island. Yeah, it's too good. Too good to... Ooh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is how you know you drafted the open colors when every single pack is just full of amazing things for you. Hi yi yi. I think I'm short on playables. It just really hurts to decide between Bull Drifter and Hostage Taker. Like, I would love Underground Sea. Don't get me wrong. But I, I need to take a playable here, I think, because 27... I have 20 playables right now. Uh, and I already have Fetid Pools. It does enter tapped, but this would make both of my... No, there's no way. I can't pass on one of these. And I think it's going to be Hostage Taker because I have a lot of creatures that draw cards already. So this is just a unique effect. And it is a really good effect too. Okay, there's a Scrubland. There's also Rankle. Each opponent sacrifices a creature or enchantment. You know what I might do? I could take Midnight Clock. And this gives me a way to reshuffle my deck. It's basically acceleration that also like guarantees that you win the game. Hmm. Maybe this lets them decide, right? Creature or enchantment. No, I think I'm just going to take Scrubland. That's fine. Wrinkle's good, but I need a little bit more fixing. Karn is nice. I have a couple artifacts, but not that many. Well, from tomorrow. Wow, there's tap lands too. I didn't even... Oh, it, it might be literally just the black-white tap land. That's funny. I don't think I need that. I, I just took scrub land, and I don't want my lands entering the battlefield tapped. It's really deciding whether I want Karn or Pull from tomorrow. Karn is card draw, and the constructs don't matter too much. I have so much card draw, though. I'm, I'm glad I took Hostage Taker there. I'll take Pull from tomorrow. Ooh, Mystic Snake. That was nice. I'm very happy about that one. Shriek Maw also. Yeah, so that, that's what I was saying. I'm going to get one of these. I think it's Shriek Maw. I just got pull from tomorrow. I don't need Spectral Sailor. I just have to make sure I don't die. And then Doom Whisperer for matchups where I feel like I need the extra removal. I might play Eureka actually. Imagine just like rebuying a Hostage Taker or a Mystic Snake or any of those cards. Seems pretty nice. I think at this point I can cut the migration path mostly because it is a splash card. Right now this is 8 so this will be 20 four playables so we can get rid of dawn of hope part of me wants to cut the boros signet but part of me thinks i also need like a little bit of acceleration because my deck is so 
like strong in the late game. Hmm. There's more packs. I thought I was done. <laughs> um. Okay. What am I taking here? Kaya's Guile. I keep forgetting you can choose two. I get way not enough time from this pack. I think I'm going to take the Sower, but that, that was a very challenging pick. I only had nine seconds to decide and I went with that one. I don't think we'll main deck Sower, but we'll see what happens after sideboarding. Beast Within's actually kind of good. That'll be... I'll probably bring that card in a lot. Okay. Well, I don't think I'm going to start that card. I think Shriek Maw is better. Although, how much do I like Agonizing Remorse? Okay, let's... Shriek Maw's a two drop. This is kind of two mana. I have actually a good chunk of creatures that would get some value from Yuriko. Stick Snake, Hostage Taker. Cloudscape costs two. Then just like infinite X drops. Oh, this is fine. This is totally an 18 land deck. So I could just run this plus 18 land. That actually seems fine. I don't need a white source. I just have the one white card and we have Scrubland and Irrigated Farmland. One forest gives us one, two, three green sources. That seems kind of low. Let's go through blue. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 13 blue sources is a lot. So I could definitely go up on forests. Black sources I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I don't have any double black cards except for finale, which is kind of a late game. So that's also fine. I might be going up on green again. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Five green sources is plenty, I think. So I don't even know what color to add. Blue? Sure. Right, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight black sources. So we're at like 12, eight, five for our mana cost. That seems pretty good to me. It's possible I do want the Sower of Temptation. I'm thinking about it now. I could play it instead of something like Pull From Tomorrow. Because Sower is really good with Eureka. Well, it's it's fine with Eureka. Um, I could also cut Eureka because it is a bit situational and just make sure all of my cards are very high impact. I actually like that more. So this this is the most proactive deck. Yeah, I, I think I think we can do better than this. It's a lot of four drops, but a lot of value, a lot of X spells, agonizing remorse. I do kind of like that. We'll play that instead of Sower for game one. And then we'll change it up depending on what kind of deck we face. Because basically Sower is really bad in some matchups. See you guys round one. All right, we're playing against two Shy Shy. And we're on the play, which is so good. And we have this hand, which is so good. Opponent says, good luck. Thank you. It looks like I got it. This, this hand is... Oh my gosh, our deck is good. Oof, our opponent Mulligan 2-6. Bit unfortunate. Um... I'm deciding if I want to fetch, so it would be for a tropical island. Basically, am I okay drawing more lands? I think I'm okay drawing more lands, so we'll lead on a basic. And I know the thinning from fetching is marginal, but it's still worth thinking about because, you know, while it's marginal, it does exist. Acre Slick is nice, so let's just play Boral Signet. Blue green past turn, I like it. So now we get to hold up Supreme Will and Factor Fiction, and I'm still just okay drawing lands, honestly, so. We'll just pass turn. Icker Slick costs six to cycle in madness. Somberwald Sage. Um, I think I'm gonna let that resolve and take this time to resolve my factor fiction. Ooh, the intervention is really nice. So for two mana, I can kill it, and then I can still hold up Supreme Will. So that is my priority here. But obviously, if it's like, I think they're basically going to split intervention in two lands versus finale in a land. And then I'll just take Intervention in two lands, because that, that's just better for me. Look at that. He knows how to split. Yeah, because Finale, it's good, but my hand is all removal anyway, and just being able to hold up... Right, this is a 1-1. One, one. So, 1 mana, exile that, have 3 mana available. Yeah. This is just more value for me. Because there's one thing my deck is not shy with. It is removal. Ooh, Riftwing. So, here we Intervention. And all of my other spells are, all my black spells are sorcery. So we're just going to go Polluted Delta Pass. And then next turn I can hold up Icker Slick and or Suspend Riftwing Cloudscape. Okay, that's dying to an Icker Slick, I think. Let's get Tropical Island. That resolves. I kind of want to just bounce Rashmi because that was their best play last turn. And this does put something into play. Three. 
Yeah, that actually seems kind of nice. Just a good tempo hit. Basically, I'm trying to set up for a turn that I can Eker Slick, like, and do something else. Or I think the, the real play here would be, like, Parting Thoughts and then have four mana available to Thassa's Intervention. Yeah. And they're missing land drops. Oh, boy, that's bad. Ooh. Okay. Well, yep, that seems nice to me. Oh, I need black mana. Okay. Yoink. Play this. So now I have Supreme Will. I cannot necessarily cast Rashmi yet, but I will be able to next turn. And I can protect my Hostage Taker. Yeah, okay. They didn't even need to see it. This seems... I mean, they literally cast once, two spells the entire game. And they all convinced me that Sword of Temptation is very good here. What's not good? Um, I think the whole deck is perfect. Empowered Auto Generator could be a little slow on the draw. I could see that. We'll just cut that card. Ah, uh, yes, 18 land. Um, this is definitely a mulligan. This sounds great. We will keep this. And what do I do? <laughs> I want all of these. I feel weird getting rid of Dig Through Time. I'm on the draw. I'm actually going to get rid of a forest. I'm running 18 land on the draw. Yeah, this seems okay. This, this is the reason to put a bunch of land in your deck so that you can like confidently say you're going to hit land drops. And yeah, if we get to three mana and we have two draw steps to get there, I think we'll be fine. Fiend Artisan. Interesting. Um, plus one plus one for each creature card in your graveyard. I think we're just going to kill this now. I know I could suspend Cloudskate, but I don't, like, basically if Fiend Artisan gets bigger, like if they somehow play like a Seder Wayfinder and mill themselves, that could get really out of hand. Uh, okay, I don't necessarily like that. Bedded Pools does enter tapped. All right, I pay the price. What are you, you going to put into play, opponent? They got me with their sequencing. Okay. Not so bad. I think we kill the Beast Whisperer here. They only have four cards in hand, so... Basically, Somberwald Sage gives them the ability to accelerate, but if they don't have many cards to accelerate into, that's not that bad for us. We can just not get max value, but still get some value off Icker Slick. And if they don't do anything super crazy here, I think we can stabilize pretty easily with Seagate Oracle and then Champion of Wits. I basically just want to make land drops. Uh, that's a problem. Yeah, so we just need to cut them off of their card draw engines. Chromatic Lantern. Ooh, that's fun. But they appear to be mono green. I could be wrong because they just revealed Chromatic Lantern and Dryad, but so far the only card I'm scared of is Tireless Tracker. Dream Eater. Okay, so we're going to Seagate Oracle to try and hit a land. Marsh Flats is cool. Play that. Can't do anything else. But they only have one card in hand, so we got to hope we don't just die here. I mean, they have so much potential. Okay, they are blue. They crack their clue. I mean, Tireless Tracker is pretty big. I think I'm just going to bounce him. <laughs> oh, no. We're in big trouble. That's, that's a lot of card draw. Yeah, we're in huge trouble now. All right, I need to draw my spell that does X to... Or it destroys, like, three creatures with toughness X or less. Okay, there's a lot of crazy things going on there that I did not expect were going to happen. We're dead. We're straight up dead. <laughs> Their deck is sweet. Um, I mean, I take it, but there's no way this goes well for me. We're going to get a something with this. I don't really know. I guess my blue-white tap land. And, I mean, there's nothing really good for me to target. I guess I can hit Prophet of Krufix, so it, it forces them to commit to the board now. That way, if I draw like a board wipe... They're more heavily committed. <laughs> sure, you got a Kolga. They kill my Cloud Skate. That is kind of nice because it means I can cast Dig Through Time easier. But there's our Forest. It's not just over, but it's kind of just over. Um, all right, so we pass turn. They draw two cards. One benefit of this is I get to see more of their deck. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Yep, so they get more clues. Oh, they can play two lands a turn. And they can grow the tireless tracker and cast things with flash. I have no idea what I'm returning yet. And I think we're going to graveyard all of these. I don't want any of them. Yeah, I think I just graveyard everything. 
And then what am I bouncing? If I bounce Yeva, they could just recast it. If I bounce Kolga, that's even worse. Hmm. I think we are going to reset the tracker. Bounce this. And Kolga can return humans. So Somberwald Sage, the only human. Okay, so we're going to trade with Yeva, chump the Kolga, take five. I'm dying to find out what this red and blue mana is for. I guess blue is for profit. That makes sense. So what's the red for? That's a lot of mana. What cost this much mana? Oh my goodness. Genesis Hydra X equals 12. Okay, they have a 12-12. Now I get to see their deck. So they have end, ra end raise forerunners, which I think is what they were looking for, and I think I'm dead, but they have a Ravager Worm, which fights and destroys lands with activated abilities. They have Rashmi, Primal Might, Eternal Witness. Okay. So I've seen most of their deck. It's creatures, they have almost no removal. They do have a couple fight effects. I think I'm just dead to this, right? This becomes a 9-8 trample, so I take 6. Okay. Well played by the opponent. So, Mire in Misery sacrifices a creature or enchantment. I think I do want some early removal. So I like that. And pretty much just that. I'm just trying to decide what's bad. I mean, I think most of my deck is good here. Shriek Maw is good. All these cards are great. Yeah, Agonizing Remorse can deal with Kolga, which is a huge problem. I think Kolga is the only reason they were in that game. That and Prophet of Krufix. Those two combined together is <laughs> especially disgusting. Um, I don't think I need pull from tomorrow. I think we're going to be just fine as it is. Maybe it's last words. Let me think about this. I think we're going to be fine. It's really the, like, the first couple turns that matter. I'm on the play. I'm going to keep this because I have Erebus's intervention to deal with that, the X one that adds three mana. And if I hit a third land, then I'm just golden. And they mulliganed, so that's great. I'm not going to fetch off Marsh Flats, but I don't want to... Commit to having mana confluence in play for too long. Although I don't think it matters, really. Oral Signet. Okay, that's good enough. Right, all of these enter tapped. That's fine. I'll find more um, blue sources. So I guess I did pay a little bit of a price by not fetching end of turn. Because I wanted to get the blue-black one. But I think that's not that bad. We draw island. Okay, that's good. So now I can go Eagate Oracle. Um, Mystic Snake, I do like, but I can't really cast it right now. I'll just take the land. Let's turn. Okay, they play Dryad. Hopefully they don't have a secondary land drop. They do. Hmm. Prophet of Kruf Krufix is a 2-3, so I think we're just going to play the farmland. I'll leave them with Dryad in hand. The game plan here is to just uh, outvalue them, because, like, Finale of Eternity is just going to completely destroy them. And, like, they're going to put these lands into play and cast these creatures eventually, and I'm not racing them anytime soon. Ugh. Six damage. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Rurikthar was a good, uh, good sideboard option. Well, we're taking 13 damage, but we're going to come out of this okay. So this can only do three damage to something, so I cannot kill Dryad here, but I can kill both of their creatures. And it starts by going Parting Thoughts on the Dryad. Or I guess Parting Thoughts on Rurikthar. Actually, okay, that's fine. We don't have to take that much damage. Kill that. Take six. And then for the sake of mana efficiency, I'm just going to Mire and Misery. This also makes Karuga a lot worse. And do I want to play Fetid Pools? I think so. I'll attack for one. The opponent's down to two cards. And yes, this is what we were looking for. So now we've stabilized, we have some card draw, some counter spells. Um, I think I'm just going to pass with mana up. This opponent is looking distinctly less mono green than when I first saw them. A lot of mana. And raise four runners. When this enters the battlefield, other creatures you control get plus two, plus two, and gain vigilance and trample. So one, two, three, four, five. All right, we're just going to counter that, I guess. Plus this intervention. They have no extra mana, but I guess I'll do this just to be safe. I could have let it resolve, but that, that feels like one way that I lose. So there's an island. Um, I think we're going to Champion of Wits now. Draw two. Okay. I like all of this. They have one card in hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I think we're going to discard island. Maybe just island, island. 
That seems not that bad. Then we can suspend our cloud skate past turn. Or I'll attack. I don't mind trading. Okay, Slumberwald Sage, I don't care about. As far as I can tell, they don't have any Eldrazi in their deck, and they already cast their scariest card. I will play this land, and I guess I'll attack for two now. I really want Champion of uh, Wits to die. That's a lot of mana. What is this? What costs this much mana? <laughs> what do they have? Holy cow, is it a Genesis? Or Oh, it's a Genesis Hydra. Oh. Right. Okay, Galta. <laughs> they have a Galta. Fair enough. Um, what am I doing here? I can intervention my Champion of Wits. So, Finale of Eternity, no way I can kill Galta. Intervention, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I can gain 12 life. There's no way I can, Yeah, I can't do anything there. I think I'm just going to leave them with their card in hand and kill my own Champion of Wits. So that way I can spend my turn embalming it, gain a bunch of life. Get this back. Um, You know what? I'm going to play the land first. I think it's definitely possible that my life total matters here. Draw four, discard two. So we discard Forest. Hostage Taker will be nice. I guess at this point I don't really need Prophet of Crufix. It's nice, but I don't need it. So we're going to bounce Galta. We're going to take a bunch of damage here. Then we bounce Galta, and then we Hostage Taker it, and then we can recast it probably. Cost 12, and I'm going to have 1, 2, 6, 7. So I'm going to have 5. If I draw a land in the next two turns, I can cast Galta. I'm going to take it and go to 4. Um... I might just die to this, but it seems worth keeping my 4-4 in play. What is this much mana? <laughs> what is happening? Okay. Man, their draws have been good. So they can get Karuga. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, this is a problem. What did they choose? They get Karuga and they refill their hand. All right. This has been quite the battle. I do get Riftwing Cloud Skate, so I can bounce the big trampler. Bounce Galta. Acor Slick, 1, 2, 3, 4, hmm, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I can Finale of Eternity to kill Karuga, Somberwald, Sage, and Land of War Elves. 1, 2, 3, 4. I don't think they have a way to kill my Hostage Taker. So if I Hostage Taker the Genesis Hydra, and then I Finale of Eternity, I can't do it for 4. Yeah, I think there's no way for me to get all the value I want. So I think I'm just going to steal their Hydra. Well, it doesn't have Trample, so I can Finale for four, so one, two, three, four, five, six mana, and kill these three. Then they just have a Genesis Hydra, a Galta, and one Unknown. And then I can Hostage Taker, the Galta. That seems a little bit better, so we're going to do that. Right, one, two, one, oh, I don't need that much. One, two, one, two, three, four, or Finale. So four mana, three target creature with a toughness X or less, yeah. this. This and this. So if they can grant trample, I die. But if they can't, I'm gonna be able to steal their 12-12 and play it for like no mana. So here's hoping that they do that. Okay, that makes sense because they could just um play Galta for like literally nothing. I forget how much she costs. I think I can cast her after Hostage Taker. That's really the hope. She costs 12. So I'm gonna have one. Oh, I have to chump actually. So I'm gonna have four, five, six, seven, eight, three, four. So I think I could still do it. We're gonna chump with my lowest power creature. They have two cards in hand. I draw a land, which is good. So we go land, hostage taker, steal Galta, cast Galta. And I think it's in my benefit to start attacking here. I'll attack for two in the air. This is a really close game. This has been great. This cube is so much fun. Regardless of the outcome, both sides fought very hard. I just don't know how their deck beats a 12-12. So they've been thinking for a while. I think if, if they pass this turn, it seems very hard for me to lose because, like, look at my hand in board state. But if they have a way to, like, tap down Galta somehow, I don't know if, like, a Frost Lynx or something is in this cube, um, but that would be a problem. Otherwise, I think we've got this. Okay, so they have Kiora, but Kiora only untaps stuff. But she does draw them cards, right? If a creature with power 4 or greater enters, they draw a card. But she cannot tap down my Galta. I'm so nervous. <laughs> What's in their hand? How are they drawing straight gas? 
I guess Kar Karuga. Karuga is always the answer. What does this do? Oh, okay. So it's a 15 15, so they can't attack with it, but that's really scary. Fair enough. I forgot, I forgot they had Primal Might. <laughs> okay, but the 9 9. Oh, Soren probably means we're okay. Um, so I'm going to double block Genesis Hydra with Champion of Wits Hostage Taker. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I think we just pass turn. Right? This only does six damage. Or wait a second. I can Soren minus six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, I think it's a little bit late for that. I could have played Soren, used Soren entirely to kill the Genesis Hydra, but they're just top decking. I think we'll be fine just passing turn here. Unless they draw another massive spell, I think we're okay. Because we're going to double block and then Eker Slick the Genesis Hydra. And for those wondering, it is a sorcery, but it has cycling and madness. So you can cast it with madness at instant speed. They did draw a spell. <laughs> no! Oh, that's really bad. Oh, that's very, very bad. So that gets back End Ray's Forerunners. That was an insane draw. How much mana do they have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> oh no. That gets back Endray's Forerunners. Um so I can draw Mystic Snake? I don't think Icar Slick does it anymore. So we're playing for the Mystic Snake or Thassa's intervention, which I already cast game plan. Oh, you know what? There's also the thing that counters it unless they pay three. Do I let Eternal Witness resolve? I think I do. They're going to get Endray's Forerunners, but if they cast it, that means I have two live draw steps in that the one that counters unless they pay three and Mystic Snake. If they just get Galta, though, I'm in trouble. Yeah, that was an insane draw. They get a red thing. What is this? Rurik Thar the Unbowed. I see. Fair. This goes to their hand, right? Okay. <laughs> oh, Rurik Thar the Unbowed. That's a big problem. It doesn't necessarily win them the game. All of my outs are still valid though. So now, one, two, three, four, and then I can still Mystic Snakes. So let's cast Factor Fiction. Yes, we did it, Supreme Will. Okay, that is that is exactly why I let Eternal Witness resolve. Oh, okay. I think that play might have won us the game. It's gonna be Supreme Will versus the world. And I take it. They only have two mana. Supreme will counter unless they pay three. Um, I have to chump the Genesis Hydra. Ooh, this is some high-level play. This person's really good. Yeah, so I have to chump. I'm deciding which creature is the least important. And I feel like somehow it is Riftwing Cloudskate. They untap the Hydra. So we, I think we're in the same boat. We need to dodge an insane draw from our opponent again. We draw a land, which is not great. Remember how I took out my card that draws X cards? <laughs> Um, the other thing is I might deck. Like, that's a very real possibility. Hmm. So I can no longer do the double block Eker Slick play because I die. I think, I think I have to play Sorin. I can play Sorin in Uptick. We're playing the land. Um, if I play Sorin in Uptick, then my game plan is basically to chump block Genesis Hydra. Because I don't think I can win. I think I need to Uptick Sorin. What do I lose to then? Right, they attack, I chump, I go to two. I think that's okay. Womp is good. Okay. Pass turn. So I need them to whiff here. No, oh, they drew a spell! Stop drawing spells! Please be something really inconsequential. Nope, that's not inconsequential. That's so much mana! <laughs> uh, okay. Alright, well. Not beating that one. I'm dead. On board. Yeah, I'm not beating that draw. Not in a million years. I needed, because I only have seven cards left and I need to close the game out. So I needed to start upticking Sorin. Ah, unless they attack Sorin. I needed to start upticking Sorin so I like had cards left to win the game with. <laughs> yep, sometimes your opponent just draws like that. I mean, they played very well too, but I mean, what, what did I have left? Could I have won the game? So I had Atris, Shriekmaw, Dream Eater. I guess I can't see the other two. You could probably go through my deck. So if I, let, let me think about this. So if I down tick Sorin, right? So let's say I use my Sorin and Icar Slick to kill the Genesis Hydra. I'm at 10 life instead of four. They play Kogla. They kill my four, four. They can't really attack. 
I think I might have decked. It would have been close. So maybe I played a little bit too conservative and hoping that they would miss on their top deck. So essentially, if they miss on their top deck, I win the game for sure. Because then I get to go Sorin, kill Genesis Hydra. I get to keep Sorin in play and then have the rest of my deck. I don't know. Yeah, let me know in the comments. Anyway, I'll see you guys next round. All right, let's see if we can get the 2-1. I mean, I know we can because <laughs> this deck is absolutely insane. But, or, I mean, you know, if our opponents play well like they did last time. But this hand's great. We have um, Sheldak Isle and things. Ooh. I think we're going to go for a Dream Eater. That's the most mana value. Opponents on blue-red things. Exciting. Ooh, I like that. Um, there is Sensor in this format. And I don't really have a 3-mana play. But my deck is full of three mana plays. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit him with this. If they censor me, okay. Oh wow. A lot of things. Season Pyromancer is their play next turn. And then they have a planeswalker on very far from now. Omen spell adept. You may cast an instant or sorcery spell from your hand without paying its mana cost. That comes down late. Although they did go first. I'm just gonna take the Pyromancer and really slow them down. So we'll pop out their hand there. You can get an idea of what's going on. The other benefit of this is like all of the spells they would like to cast cost five mana. I'm gonna cycle fetid pools, see if I draw another tap land. I don't. Play island. Last turn. So they go on four, they do nothing again, probably. I think they played a mountain since I saw them, they played an island. But I get to go factor fiction into dig through time, which is gonna be nice. And I could upkeep factor fiction, but that seems not that great. I, I wanted them to like be a little bit scared of a counter spell. They played Jaya Ballard. Uh, sure. Actually, I'm gonna Foth now. I think having them split before they know, I think they might be down ticking with Jaya Ballard. So having them split before they know what they're hitting seems good. So, pull from tomorrow and intervention versus intervention Atris Island. I have dig through time. Atris can pressure Jaya Ballard. And... Yeah, I think I'm going to take this pile. I already have Dig Through Time, so I don't need Intervention or Pull. Yep, so they discard three. I'm guessing just Omen Spell Adept and two lands. So they have Temporal Trespass. Ooh, that was a fantastic draw. Play Prophet. Prophet is so unbelievably strong. <laughs> Look at this. I get to just untap and keep going. And I can Dream Eater. Was this a Dream Eater? Yeah. Okay, they're looting again. Uh, that's actually moderately problematic because now I think they do get to Temporal Trespass. Unless they just cast that. So let's run out Atris. Give them another Factor Fiction-esque pile. Seagate Oracle versus two unknowns. I'll take the two. If they're land, that's actually not so bad. And Boros Signet's good. Wow. What does the emblem do? I'm getting scared now. You may cast instant and sorcery spells from your graveyard. Oh, no, no, I have um, Dream Eater, so this is fine. Yeah, this is actually not that bad. So I get to go to target creature or planeswalker. So I can also just nug Jaya Ballard. I think that's a little bit worse than just getting down our signet and developing our mana. I want to hold up one black. That way I can cast Erebus's Intervention in case they do something crazy like play all the spells in their graveyard. So basically, if they go for an extra turn and try an ultimate Jaya Ballard, then I can Dream Eater the Jaya. Okay, so they do that. I suppose I let that resolve. They only have two cards left. Um, you get an emblem. Yeah, I don't think I can let them ult Jaya, so we're going to go for this. Look how good Sheldak Isle was. Ooh, Finale of Eternity. Does it say up to three? Yes, so I can just get back all of my things. Hmm. Well, I'm going to get rid of all these lands. Finale on top can get back Atra, Seagate, Oracle, Prophet. I already have good removal. I think I'm just going to put that into my graveyard. Bounce that. Okay. I might have messed up by getting rid of Finale of Eternity, but it just seemed like their deck wouldn't have that many creatures. They got rid of Jaya. I guess I messed up. Zero red mana. All right. Um, I don't really want to attack because they have Champion of Wits, and I don't want to let them bring it back. Let's play our island, and I think I'm going to play it conservatively, just past turn. And the plan here is to block Neheb, take the Afflict, then go with Eker Slick, take the damage, cycle to 
Cycle this way. I don't have any green spells, so cycle. Cast here. You know, I think I should have cast Dig Through Time first. That way I have more information. Zor's Gateway, one card in hand, which they're looting away. Okay. They exiled Gamble. And they drew Factor Fiction off the top. Fair enough. Jeez. Um, Wildfire Devils. When it enters the battlefield at the beginning of your upkeep, choose a player at random. We exile an instant or sorcery card from their graveyard. What? Wow, that's good. All right. So, Wildfire Devil's dual caster mage is insane. I guess I can exile the card from graveyard. Factor Fiction was a great hit here. I hit them for four. One, two, three. So I'm going to give them Gearhulk Palladium Mirror versus Wildfire Devil's dual caster mage. That seems fair. And they went with the more ambitious route, which I like. Cast Dig Through Time. I might deck myself, but I doubt it. So I definitely like Mystic Snake. And I also like Hostage Taker. And the order actually does matter. We'll go Cloud Skate, Shriek Maw, and then land. So the bottom three cards of my deck are land. And I'm going to play a Forest just to, so I know what I have. I can attack. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'm one mana away from being able to do everything. We're just going to discard a mana confluence then. No, I'll discard Marshlats. I don't want to decrease my deck size. And they can't even dual caster mage my snake, which is <laughs> actually really funny. All right. They got rid of Thrill of Possibility. I'll take two. Seems a bit odd to attack there to me. Search for his Kanta. That will flip. I don't think that matters though, their, their deck is very almost empty. So their last card in hand is a dual caster mage. I'm going to hit them for 6. This is just creatures and planeswalkers. Island. We can play Sorin. Uptick Sorin. They lose 3, so they go down to 7. Part of me wants... No, we're just going to hold up Supreme Will. I know... I know what's in my deck, right? It's, um... I'm going to draw, and then it's... Shriek Maw, Riftwing. So Soren Uptick is going to do 5 damage for sure. Except the top 8 cards of your library. That would kill them. <laughs> I like their deck though. It's really sweet. Okay, so they're still digging. And I like that because... Faithless Looting. So they have Madness stuff. Some creatures. I don't really see like a combo win condition yet though. I imagine they maybe have Rael Zarek with Expansion Explosion. Enters the battlefield. We're just going to counter that. And they die. This lets them know about it, but I think they were going to try and Scholar. I don't know what they could have gotten from your graveyard. Yeah, I don't know what they could have gotten, but it felt safer to just not let that happen. So we need a way to stop spells. Knowledge Exploitation. I don't think matters too much. This feels like a good Doom Whisperer matchup instead of... I think Icker Slick's actually a bit weak. And what else do I want? I think the rest is okay. Part of me wants to bring in Night Pack Ambusher because it's a 4-4 four four and that seems like hard for them to kill. I know it's double green so that it's going to be, it's probably too hard to cast. I could be cutting a land on the draw. That's not the craziest thing I've ever heard of. Could also get rid of Finale. What if I get rid of Parting Thoughts and just bring in Night Pack Ambusher and just like accept the fact that I might not. What if I do that and Migration Path? Then my deck is all 4 drops. I think I'm going to get rid of Finale for Undead Gladiator, and then I'm going to cut a Swamp for a Forest. I just think Night Pack Ambusher has some promise in this matchup, and we're going to do that. Um, yeah. Basically, any hand with Sheldark Isle in it, I should just keep, especially in this matchup. There's just, like, really no way for them to interact with it. Oh, <laughs> uh, and I have to choose a card. Alright, um, sure. Kind of just, I'm going to take an island. <laughs> That's the worst. I mean, again, it's not a very large cost. It's just a land. So even when it's not the best thing ever, it's still the best thing ever. Tropical Island is pretty nice. I haven't seen Wasteland yet, so I'm just going to assume there's no way to punish non-basic lands. I could be wrong. Palladium Mirror is scary. Don't like that. So we're going to hold up Thassa's Intervention. Wildfire Devil. That's a big problem. And I can't even counter it. All right. Opponent played well. Cycle Fetid Pools. Soren is good though. That'll help. Um, the beginning of your upkeep, right? 
I mean, they had their, their go at it with Wildfire Devil, so I think I have two options. I can go for Night Pack Ambusher and Thassa's Intervention. That seems better than just tapping out for Empowered Auto Generator. I didn't really see much counter magic from them, just removal. Um, sure. This is risky, but we're gonna go for it. They have the do four card. They do in fact have the do four card. All right, turns out the other play would have been much, much better because now they get to do that and then they just untap and do four damage to me again without paying the mana cost. <laughs> oh, that's insane. Um, all right, so I'm gonna take eight, nine, 10 and go to one life, which means I cannot cast Sora next turn. So I guess the better game plan is to force them to cast the Wildfire Devils. And that just limits their mana choices. And also, I don't die. The next turn, they tap out for Wildfire Devils. I can kill them with Sorin. I'll be pretty low on life. Or they just cast something really big that's even scarier. Okay. That's a lot. So they can take an extra turn. <laughs> okay, God Pharaoh's Gift. Wow, that is really good. I think I undervalued that card. Whenever you discard a creature card, put a counter on this. Whenever you discard a land, create a token. Okay. So now... <laughs> oh my gosh. Now they get to play their devils, copy the animator's augury, and just go deep again. Yeah, that card's insane. I'm not sure... <laughs> oh no! <laughs> wow, their deck is so good. So it's going to fight. They discard a land. I think I'm actually dead on board. Exactly. That's six. Wow. Well played by the opponent. And they can even uh, God Pharaoh's gift. It has haste. Yeah, we're just dead. I'll let them keep going because this is sweet, but we are super dead here. So they're going to reanimate wildfire devils. When it enters, they're going to vo violent eruption my face. And it's going to be a 4-4 four, four haste due to God Pharaoh's gift. Wow. Sweet deck. I am bringing back the creature removal because Palladium Mirror is such a problem. Oh, I have to concede here. I don't want them seeing my deck. All right. Um, Anel of Eternity, getting in the deck. Undead Gladiator, nope. And Mire in Misery? Uh, Sword of Temptation. I like the idea of Sword of Temptation, but I think this deck me needs more like early play. So Acre Slick has been really slow, but it does kill the card that I wanted to kill. I felt like Night Pack Ambusher was okay. Hmm. We're gonna get rid of the auto generator and run it like that. Going first, very scared of their deck. Got a mulligan. Alright, this hand's good. We can keep this and just get rid of a forest. I only have one double green card in my deck, so it's not likely to come back to haunt me. And I'm leading on blue because there's a good chance I'm suspending Rift Wing turn two. Okay, Icar Slick is fine, so that would have been the um the other card. There's a, there's actually a decent chance I just suspend Icar Slick if they don't play Palladium Mirror on three. Um, now I think I'm just gonna cycle Icar Slick. Yeah, the seasoned Pyromancer. It's good, but it's beatable. I just need lands. Now yeah, we're just gonna cycle this. That Bulligan putting a land on the bottom really hurt. Okay, Seagate Oracle actually deals with seasoned Pyromancer pretty nicely, and we drew a land. I don't think I need Thassa's intervention this turn. Champion of Wits and Atris. Atris draws more cards. So Riftwing Cloudscape is going to bounce a land almost assuredly from them. Or this, whatever this is. Whenever you discard a creature card, put a counter on it. We'll see. I, I wish I knew if I was drawing a land or not. I think we're going to bounce a red source because they do have that triple red card. Land? Okay, perfect. So now we can go the Nally of Eternity for three and wipe their board. And then hit for three. And that's a pretty backbreaking tempo play because we're going to follow it up with Doom Whisperer, which is quite a bit larger than I think their deck can normally deal with. And this feels like they're holding up Factor Fiction. One, two, three, four. Do I really need to do anything? I ask myself that question frequently. So I can just pass and hold up Thassa's Intervention. The problem becomes if they end of turn factor fiction. I think we're just going to Whisper. I don't know of cards in their deck that can deal with this quite reasonably. Yeah, if they're just cycling the Triome, this is really good. So now I can fill my graveyard and try and just find Dig Through Time or something good like that. But I don't know how they're killing this. Jin of Wishes. Fair enough. Let's see what we're drawing. Graveyard, Graveyard. Surveil. 
I think I like Pull From Tomorrow. There we go. Shriek Mob, Polluted Delta. I'm actually okay with both of these. So, it's actually safest for me to just evoke Shriek Maw because I still can hold up Thassa's Intervention. And they die next turn. Really sweet deck, though. The opponent's deck was awesome. I would love to play their deck. Temporal. All right, counter. Unless they pay two. All right, see you guys next round. All right, we were playing against that MTG guy, 405. This hand's great. We're going to keep. We got the old Prophet of Crufix into Atris, Hostage Taker stuff. I think it's a lot of blue lately. I think people are catching on. Leading with Swamp, because I'm going to cast Agonizing Remorse turn two. Yep, people are catching on. Although, that looks like a really nice target for my Hostage Taker if I can draw a land. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Um, I mean, we're taking Migration Path because that slows them down the most, I think. There's two, there's two ways we can approach this. We can take Migration Path and then they're going to have four mana with nothing to do. Or we can take Progenitor Mimic and try and steal their Chromatic Orrery. Hmm. Oh, this is hard. I mean, Progenitor Mimic's very scary. So let's, let's see what happens here. They Next turn, they go up to four mana, they Migration Path. I need to hit a land, actually, for this to work out. I have two draw steps to get there. I think I'm going to take the Migration Path. That just gives me a lot of time. But it is a, dif a difficult decision, for sure. Because, like, what if I play Atris? Then they just get to Progenitor Mimic my Atris? That's not great. Land? Ugh, it's not a land. All right, I mean, next turn I got to draw land. I'm running 18 land. I was on the draw, and I kept a three lander. But they drew Hollowed Fountain. So I know their hand. All right, we will run out Seagate. I know they get to Progenitor Mimic it, but this makes sure I hit my land drops. And then I can, ah, that's actually hard because I can Hostage Taker the Progenitor Mimic, but I'm not that scared of it. So we're going to Erebus's Intervention the Progenitor Mimic and then Hostage Taker the Chromatic Orrery. That seems better. Oh, uh, <laughs> okay, fair enough. Bit scary that our opponent. Shell that Isle's good. Soren's great. Okay. Um, I really don't like doing this, but I think I just have to cast Atris. It gives them information and a good um, progenitor mimic target. I need stuff in play though. They have Maelstrom Nexus, so even if I do manage to steal their chromatic orrery, um, they it's like they can draw five cards with this. Ooh, Mystic Snake. I gotta take Mystic Snake. That seems quite good. I know they have Cascade and whatnot, but I get to go Prophet of Crufix, hold up Mystic Snake, and Hostage Taker, and that'll be good. So they've played Isolated Chapel, Catacomb, they get to Chromatic Orrery with Cascade. Okay, that's a good one to Cascade into, I'm fine with that. So the hope here, nice. I was going to say the hope is that they didn't draw Castable Spell, and they did not. So what do I want to target? I kind of want to target the Maelstrom Nexus. Oh, this is really hard. I want to pressure them, so I want to delay them as much as possible. One, two, three, four, five, six. So they can then play Progenitor Mimic as a copy of something. I guess as a copy of my Prophet, and then they get to untap, but then that doesn't matter. So I think I leave them so hard, because I can bounce Maelstrom Nexus, but they can literally just cast it off of Chromatic Orrery and then play Progenitor Mimic. I think I'm going to bounce the Nexus. I think I'm bouncing the Nexus, and we're going to counter it with Mystic Snake. Thicker Slick is okay. We play Prophet because it's just free. Hit them for damage. And this is a really strong tempo hit because they know I have Mystic Snake. If they cast Maelstrom Nexus again, I don't really... I mean, I let it happen. No, I counter it. And then they Progenitor Mimic something, but that doesn't matter too much. We counter this. And then hopefully they just cast Progenitor Mimic. Because if all they do is cast Progenitor Mimic, then I can Hostage Taker on my turn and then cast their Mimic on Upkeep, making a copy of maybe Riftwing Cloud Skate or something. Okay. They can get Profit. So if they have a creature card in hand, that's really bad. Hmm. So I guess I'm going to Intervention or Icker Slick them. Okay. What do you got, opponent? I shouldn't have attacked with Prophet. I should not have attacked with Prophet of Crufix. Oh no. 
Let's settle the wreckage. They only have one card in hand. If it's settle the wreckage, that's a pretty good last card. Breaks the sudden storm. Yeah, all right. Shouldn't have attacked with profit. They're still probably dead, but that was a little bit sloppy. Because if I get to untap here, I just win immediately. Because I hosta taker the chromatic orrery and their upkeep. They don't have mana, they don't have cards. They're tapping this for mana? What did they draw? Good lord, what is this? It was their top deck, right? Ah, I don't like this. The one benefit I have is if whatever they're doing draws a ton of cards, I get to shell dock isle. That's the only benefit I have. Jeez. All right. That was literally the best possible draw they could have had. <laughs> yep. Okay, never mind. It was not literally the best possible draw they could have had. It does. <laughs> it does nothing. Oh, that's funny. Now I get to put a Soren into play and just kill them. All right, no more complaining. That was great. They do get a Boro Signet, so I guess if they find a really good three mana play, they can get there. Nice, 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 nice. We beat the Villainous Wealth. Their deck is sweet. Straight up five color. A lot of cool things. Beast Within seems really good in this matchup. Um, sacrifice an Enchantment sounds good. I kind of want to put a Tali in here, but I know that's a bad idea. This seems like the matchup for Yukiro. We're going to get rid of Finale. Icker Slick deals with... Eh, not a whole lot. Parting Thoughts just kills anything, no questions asked. Although, did they have much removal? Because I could just, like, take the Thrix if they cast it. I also kind of want to put a Doom Whisperer in here. I don't think I'm going to be winning the late game, so a pull from tomorrow seems bad. Part of me really likes this Night Pack Ambusher. Um... Soren seems good, dig through time. Uh, maybe I just don't play the intervention. And we are, I think I'm gonna cut something on the draw. I guess that something is a swamp. I'll add it for us. Oh no, I'm not adding anything. I'm just cutting a land on the draw because I, I don't think I'm winning the late game against this deck. Although that's, I need to not stumble, right? And all my cards, I can't cut a land. We're gonna get rid of the empowered auto generator. If I'm getting up to four, that's fine. Yep, this hand is what we are looking for. I almost accidentally mulliganed too. So we're going to go Fetid Pools turn one, then Marsh Flats for something. I don't have green mana, but I can probably find it off Seagate and Champion. I think their time is good. Yeah, I'm just going to play this. It denies me the ability to cycle, but I don't think I'm going to be cycling because I have Champion of Wits. So like it's a zero mana cycle instead of a two mana cycle. And they don't have a two mana accelerant. That's very important. Um... Yeah, so we're going to go Boros Signet because I, I don't, like, I, I really would like to draw another land next turn. I appreciate my opponent's mana fixing, though. Ooh, Mystic Snake is good. Um, We're going to Seagate Oracle before we Champion of Wits. Ah, uh, do I need discard? I have two counter spells. I don't need discard. So we can go Polluted Delta can grab Tropical Island. And then, then that turn is going to be really strong because I get to go Profit. Holding up Mystic Snake. The opponent just has Solemn. Yeah, this game went a lot better than last game. Last game was really rough. I'm not saying it's over. I mean, their deck is very scary. They have really good fixing. Get a Trop. I don't know why I did that end of turn, but that's what I did. Ooh, Yukiro. Marsh Flats. Scrubland. Play Prophet. Last turn. I should have attacked for one. Eh, probably not. They'll still block. Profit is so insane. It's definitely worth splashing in a deck like this. Final parting. Search your library for two cards, put one into your hand and the other into your graveyard. That's okay with me, I think. I'm not sure. I mean, if they get a card that's really scary from the graveyard, then I'll respect it more going forward. But I think they're just going to find Thrix and then I'll just counter Thrix. And I have the old Yukiro Mystic Snake Wombo combo. That's so good. <laughs> counter spell, bounce. Oh gosh. All right, so they put Scoured Barons into their graveyard. So they're just trying to like thin their deck, which means that tells me quite a few things actually. It tells me that they have a lot of lands in hand because they're just using it for deck thinning. Oh, that's a problem. How many do you need? Seven? Okay. Things got a lot scarier than I thought they were. Field of the Dead is legitimately terrifying. Let's Champion of Wits. I don't really have an answer to that. One, two, three, four, five. So, what are we doing here? I don't think I need Dig Through Time, actually. And, ah, oh, this is so hard. 
I think I'm going to discard Dig Through Time Intervention and just keep the Yukiro Mystic Snake combo. Uh, I'm going to discard a land. I think it, I, I might draw a land off the top, and Intervention's really good. Land? Okay. Yeah, that, that went pretty well. So now there's a couple things we can do, and they all involve swinging out. Opponent sent me a chat. They said rip. I guess me discarding Dig Through Time is scary. I don't know. They want to trade. That's fine. I think we're just going to let Seagate Oracle hit in for damage. And I'm just going to land Solemn. Or Soren, I mean. Need black mana. Or an upticks. Get a land. Okay. We untap. So now we have the Mystic Snake combo. And the reason for landing Soren there is Soren can deal with the Field of the Dead tokens that would otherwise be blocking my Snake. But I do respect their strategy. Um, that. You know what? That gets around Yukiro quite nicely. If that happens, that's fine. We're going to counter this. A lot of whiffs. Wait, didn't they hit? Oh, it was permanence! Never mind. Um, ooh. I don't even have to do that now. We can mire in misery, right? Yeah. Black, green. And she costs blue, black. I'll take Sorin. Draw land. Attack with everything. Yukiro, ninjutsu. Black, blue. Bounce the snake. That's game. <laughs> and we hit Dream Meter. Beautiful. And this is uh this is the Yukiro matchup, that's for sure. So they're just gonna go for a big thing and I'm gonna counter it with a snake. Yeah. We did it! Uh didn't quite get the trophy. We were extraordinarily close. Um match one was pretty brutal. Or match two, sometimes I switch them around to give you more suspense. So I, I might have put match two first. Um, but yeah, th this cube is insanely fun. All of these matches were incredibly interactive and like back and forth and I got to do sweet things. My opponents got to do sweet things. Th I think this is legitimately the most fun cube I've played on Magic Online. So that's sweet. Um, I'm going to keep drafting it. See you guys soon.